So for dinner tonight, we are going to have the brown sugar garlic baked chicken. It's delicious. So what I did was take about six um, medium sized um, garlic cloves and I ran them through my garlic press into a pot, added a couple cups of brown sugar, mixed it up, let it sit on the flame for a minute, and now it is going in the oven. It looks kind of gross don't worry about that it's gonna make like a brown sweet sauce it's so delicious it's gonna bubble up I check on it about halfway through it's gonna go into a 400 degree oven for probably about 30 minutes I'm also gonna be roasting carrots that's why it's up that high um, but I would be cooking it probably around 350 to 375 anyway but it's gonna be delicious it's going in the oven now these carrots are absolutely gorgeous. I'm not going to do a whole lot to them, but I'm going to get them on a sheet tray, clean them up just a little bit, and start roasting them. So I started a pot of potatoes, and I'm just using some thin-skinned, like, Idaho golden potatoes. That's one of my tips for um, weeknight cooking. Definitely don't spend a ton of time peeling potatoes. Buy some that are thin-skinned, and you can just chop them up, toss them in a pot, and you can mash them up. The skins aren't going to make any difference. I got the carrots ready to roast. They are so gorgeous. And they're about to go in the oven. I gave the chicken um, about a 10-minute start um, ahead of everything. And now, um, hopefully, everything will be timed really well. So these are going in the oven just to roast. And all I did was trim them at the stalks and give them a good washing off. And they have olive oil on them, salt, pepper, and garlic. Okay, so here is the chicken. This is an absolutely delicious recipe. Definitely try this. It bubbled up a few times. I kind of started around but it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. Chicken's got a ton of flavor. The carrots are all roasted over here and the mashed potatoes are done. I took a can of peaches and added in a couple bananas. One of you guys actually suggested that, so here I am, I'm doing it. And um, that's gonna be served as a side as well. So that's a pretty quick weeknight dinner. That's 30 minutes or less. And um, you know, plenty of food, delicious and easy to make time to eat and it's going to be absolutely delicious so here is dinner this is the prosciutto wrapped chicken it doesn't look so pretty because i forgot to record our dinner but this is a plate for Brittany. she's on her way and i just have to warm it up but this is what we had we had the prosciutto wrapped chicken with the Basil pesto cream sauce with asparagus and tomatoes, some roasted potatoes, carrots, and bread. So that was our dinner tonight. And then we went to the pie kitchen. So Ryan wanted a chocolate shake, which you can see he drank all of it. And I wanted some of this grape sherbet. It is phenomenal. This is such good ice cream. I love it. I'm only eating half of it, and then I'll put the other half in the freezer. Then we got these massive cupcakes. This is the Reese's one, this is the chocolate, and some of the um, Buckeyes. So I actually stopped and got Laura one of these and took them over to her house because she loves this as well. She's actually the one that turned me on to it because it's so good. It's just amazing. It's like a great Jolly Rancher in ice cream. And yeah, that's going to be our late night snack. But Ryan isn't feeling very well, so he's not going to eat this right away. But he did drink his shake. So I just have some broccoli on this sheet pan and the broccoli has olive oil and some different seasonings on it, some garlic and it's really like a steakhouse seasoning and some salt. I'm just going to roast it in a hot hot oven while I make the rest of dinner. And the rest of dinner was pretty easy. It was just grilling the steak up on top of the stove, roasting that broccoli and I threw a sweet potato in the oven and made some mac and cheese for Ryan. So very simple dinner tonight. It's going to be delicious and um, it's going to be a lot of food. It's plenty. So that's what we're having. Hello everybody. So tonight it is a snowy night outside. It is kind of cold and I decided to throw in the mix a big pot of meaty chili. 
So everybody's interpretation of chili is different. Um, mine is rather simple. Um, I use like ground chuck, ground beef, ground round. I don't put sausage in my chili simply because I just don't like sausage. Um, I just use um, hamburger meat, a couple cans of mild chili beans. I used to hate chili beans and what I would do is smash them. And I still smash them a little bit with a potato masher um, because I don't really like a whole bean. Not really. Um, I got a big can of diced tomatoes, a big can of crushed tomatoes, some grape pecan, a red bell pepper, a onion, some chili powder, and here in this state we put, well at least in this family, we put pasta in our chili. So I have this cavatappi, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, it's like the, kind of like elbow macaroni, but a little bit bigger. I like a really meaty chili. So that's the main focus, and that's why I've got so much. And I plan on eating this for leftovers, but we're actually having guests over tonight. So I want to make sure I have enough anyway. Just so you know, I'm serving this up with a grilled cheese, and I'll share that with you as well. Um, I shared the groceries in the food hall on probably the last vlog. I'll link it in, whichever vlog it was. Um, but I got um, some really good cheese and bread for that. So it's going to be a real hearty meal. I'm going to eat on this for a couple of days. Definitely for lunch. Maybe a repeat dinner one night this next week. Um, just depending on how much is left over. And usually I send home some um, with Ryan's dad. And he's one of the people coming over for dinner. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to go. So I'm going to get a big pot out. I'm going to get things chopped up and get it going. And I'll walk you through the process. Okay, so I did forget to mention garlic. I'm using fresh garlic. Now, I chopped up the onion and the red bell pepper, and I chopped them up pretty pretty big, pretty chunky. Think meaty, think filling, and, you know, I like everything to be kind of kind of bigger with chili. So, um, I have some olive oil heating up in this pan, and I'm just going to add the onion and add the red bell pepper and add the garlic. Garlic's last. And I like to like build flavors. So we're gonna start with this. Okay, so I have the onions and the red bell peppers in here and I just added some chili powder right to the vegetables because it really does make them taste better. It blends better with and mingles all the flavors together and just, you know, gives it more flavor. And that's what you really want with a chili. I'm gonna give this about five minutes. And then I'm going to add the garlic. So in this pot, I have the onions, the red bell peppers, and some chili seasoning. I like to build up those flavor layers, if you will. And just putting some chili powder right on the vegetables that you're starting first just adds another element of flavor. I'm getting ready to add the garlic, and then I'll add a little more chili powder. Not a lot, but just a little bit. I'm using the Meyer chili powder. You can make your own. I'm just using the store bought. It tastes amazing. And all the work's done for me, so I don't really mind it. So, in a separate skillet, I cook the ground round on its own. I like it really meaty. I like big pieces of meat. So, I just cook it in batches, drain the meat, put it in the stock pot, and do that until I have my desired amount. So all the meat is in the pan now. I have added more chili powder and a big scoop of Dijon mustard. This is the country Dijon. So I'm just gonna incorporate all that, make some flavors together. It smells so good. Okay. Now, over here in this skillet, just because I didn't want to use a bowl or anything and I had just used this for the hamburger meat, I put the chili beans in and smashed them up with the potato masher a little bit. This is how I like them. I used to always smash them up and never have any of the beans. Here you can see there's probably one can smashed and one can still left pretty whole. Um, I have gotten better by eating them and you know, I still wanted the protein. I just didn't like the way that bean felt in my mouth. So I'm going to mix that in with the hamburger. Now I can of crushed tomatoes and diced tomatoes. 
I'm going to mix all that up. Okay, look at this meaty, delicious chili. I added about two cans of water. I wouldn't have even needed but about a half a can if I wasn't adding pasta. Pasta is going to thicken it all up. And I'm just going to slowly bring this up to a boil. Look at that. See it? Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Um, I'm going to slowly bring it up to a boil and add in the pasta. Definitely taste it. See if you need to add more chili powder. I did. And I added just a splash of sugar. Anytime I use canned tomatoes, I always add a pinch of sugar. So definitely taste it and see what you need. Okay, so the chili is going. It's right over there. I'm going ahead and getting the grilled cheese made. So I decided to use a brioche loaf. It is rich. It's a French bread. It's rich. It's um, sweet. It's super soft. It's a delicious bread. And so I'm going to use that to make our grilled cheese. And I have two types of cheeses. The Fontana, right here, and the Gouda. They're both perfect for grilled cheese and just some butter. So I'm going to butter the bread. Layer on some of each cheese on each sandwich. I'm using the same skillet that I just used for the hamburger, the beans, now the grilled cheese. I just wash it. It's just easier, especially when you're in the small kitchen. And I'm going to get these going. And I'm just going to turn the oven on warm to keep the first two warm while I'm making the third one. That's going to be one delicious grilled cheese. So I am pressing down a little bit with my fingers just to help that cheese melt. But for a better grilled cheese, always use shredded cheese. So tonight for dinner, we are having a cheeseburger casserole. This is not my recipe. It is a recipe from Pillsbury. I'll try to link it below. What we're starting out with is about a pound and a half of ground chuck and one onion and I'm just going to cook this until it is completely done about seven eight minutes and then I will drain any grease from it and put it into a casserole okay so the onion and the hamburger are browned up now I'm going to add a half a cup of water we're going to add about a fourth of a cup of diced pickles right in remember this is cheeseburger you can probably hear my family in the background especially a little AJ. Now I'm going to add a half a cup of ketchup and um, about a tablespoon of yellow mustard. So I'm measuring out the ketchup. I'll get that in there. Okay, so I added Grey Poupon Country Dijon. I don't use that cheap ass mustard, that yellow stuff. I hate it. I really do hate that vinegary mustard. But, I do like grape pecan. So I'm going to mix this really well. I'm going to get it into a casserole dish. Sprinkle it with cheese. And now I'm going to take this crescent dough sheet. And it took me a minute to find it. It's not in a super long can. So when you're looking for it, it's going to be in about the same size um, can as a regular crescent roll. Um, so just brush the top of it with egg and it will go into the oven at uh, I think 375. What's popping off in here? Now you are supposed to spread some sesame seeds over the top and I forgot to get them. I just simply forgot. So it is what it is, but this will go into the oven at 375 for about 30 minutes. And when it's golden brown, it's ready to come out. So I've also got some french fries over here. What's going to go better with a hamburger casserole than french fries? I'm just putting them in the oven. So Oneida, Oneida um, Golden Crinkles. And I'm just putting these in the oven at a little bit lower of a temperature for a little bit longer. So here is the cheeseburger casserole. I garnished it with lettuce and tomatoes. I also got uh, some fruit cups ready with some tropical fruit in it. And I'm going to pull the french fries out of the oven and dinner is done. Okay, so dinner is done. 
we are having green beans with this. I forgot to mention that. And there's our french fries, our cheeseburger casserole, and our fruit. That is our dinner tonight. Hello, everybody. So, for dinner tonight, we are having pulled pork sandwiches, some mac and cheese, and some um, baked beans. Really simple dinner. We're having some potato salad with it as well. Um, so that's really what I wanted. Ryan wanted the mac and cheese. I cooked this last night in the oven. I just roasted it. I'm going to tear it up by hand and put it in the skillet. Add some barbecue sauce. Um, get this going and get these warmed up. And dinner is done. So dinner is done, you guys. It was super easy being that I cooked the pork loin the night before. It was really, really easy. Instead of making potato salad or buying it, I just made some smashed potatoes, added some green onions and cheese, made some mac and cheese, and serving it with baked beans. Ryan didn't want the potatoes. Jackson did, so I just um, gave Ryan some um, mac and cheese on its own. I have a bowl of strawberries, blueberries, and grapes on the table that I'm serving with this. This is something kind of cool and refreshing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a little bumpy. I haven't filmed one of these in a long time, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please take a second and give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow along on Instagram and Facebook, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching.